When Dr. Leo Henrik Beckland invented phenylformaldehyde resin in 1907, this discovery turned the world upside down, initiating the epoch of plastics and radically changing our life. Bakelite was not the first plastic. Depending on the world interpretation, even animal bones can be called plastic, as they can be given any form when softened. In mid-1880s, some companies had started using plunger-type presses to mold shellac and gutta percha into buttons, combs, jewels and souvenirs. Cellulose nitrate became obsolete by 1907. Alexander Parkes, an Englishman, obtained the first patent for the material called Parkesin between 1855 and 1865, as reports Gary Dubois in his book Story of Plastics, the USA. The American inventor John Winsley Hyatt patented celluloid in 1870. Parkesin Co. quickly left the scene. The celluloid took the upper hand. However, unlike celluloid, Bakelite never burned, nor melted, and acetocellulose had not yet appeared in the market by that time. Moreover, Bakelite was a thermal setting plastic. Once molded, it could not be melted again. Other researchers also worked on mixing of phenol and formaldehyde, which resulted in sticky polyether filled with glass fiber. Bakelite's initial purpose was to find a replacement for shellac, which turned to hard and soluble material after applying to wood due to chemical reaction. During several years on the eve of the 20th century, Bakelite methodically wrote down the results of his experiments with innumerable combinations of various conditions addition of solvents, agents and fillers, change of temperature and pressure. Again and again, his attempts were a failure. Finally, he found out that the rise of temperature speeds up the chemical reaction and pressure slows it down. In his diary he wrote, the material he had created was insoluble in all solvents and did not soften. He gave the substance a name that could have only been to the taste of a chemist. Oxybenzyl methylene aglycolandrohydride. Fortunately, a more melodious name, Bakelite, was found in his notes. In this way, the first Bakelite for commercial use was produced in 1909. In 1910, Bakelite launched his own factory, General Bakelite Co., in Port Ambo, New Jersey. Sales grew up very quickly, from £700,000 in 1913 to £8.8 .8 million in 1922. Bakelite initiated factories in Europe and Japan and granted licenses for Bakelite production, gradually spreading it all over the world. A patent for the use of Bakelite instead of shellac in grinding discs was of great importance. As Bakelite was a brand new invention, General Bakelite issued a number of bulletins explaining to customers its essence and value. This is not just a compound like most resin composites, such as resin shellac, but an individual chemical substance with specific properties. It is an important member of the family of plastics. In 1924, Bakelite was portrayed on the cover of the Times magazine. The article read as follows. Those who have an idea about the capabilities of Bakelite maintain that in some years it will be used in any industrial equipment. This was not the case of formaldehyde resin. However, the Times reporter could not have foreseen an explosion of popularity of thermal plastics used everywhere after 1952 when William Willard invented a machine of pressure die casting with a reciprocal motion of a screw, which replaced old piston equipment. Thermal plastic are indisputable leaders in the sector. Thermal setting plastic is but a small segment of this market. However, Bakelite is still manufactured and finds a wide range of use. Almost all car brakes, public transport and even aircrafts are made from phenolics. Bakelite is still used in classical sectors such as automotive and electrical manufacture and even in space shuttles. Of course, Bakelite has more than analogs, less harmful in production and having lots of new properties, but we should not forget the pioneer.